Felicitations, all you forest masters. Gallop into the Stinky Dragon and buy our latest brew, Set Briar to the Reins. It's a mixture of freshly squeezed good berry juice, hoarsely ground moon bolt coffee, one large carrot stick, and a sprinkling of brown sugar cubes. One sip of this strong stallion sauce is enough to clear up any morning fog cloud. Previously, our adventurers turned the clocks back 24 hours into the past and relived when they all first met. Twas the 113th anniversary of the peace treaty. They celebrated with festive food, a parade of prominent leaders, and a magic show that ended rather morbidly. Cobble yourself some coffee. Let's continue on this Cocoderous Chronicle. Cocoderous? Cocoderous? What is wrong with you? <laughs> He's talking to Micah right now. <laughs> Not himself. <laughs> Not you, the listener, okay? He's talking. I'll, I'll think it's replaced. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that stays in. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tales from the Stinky Dragon. My name is Gustavo Cirola. I am your dungeon master. I'm joined today by four players. Uh, players, introduce yourselves. What is your name? What is your character's name? What's your class, race, species, all that stuff? I am Chris Damaris, and I'm playing Barney Farney, the male character. Uh, Cleric. Why is Human Mello? cleric. There you go. The what male a, what cleric. What a weird way of describing <laughs> A boy cleric. <laughs> <laughs> the boy wonder. Uh, Blaine Gibson. I play Chip Haney, and he's a tiefling rogue. Why is everyone yelling? Because <laughs> we, we, we never did this in campaign one. I don't know why this is. Yeah. Hype <laughs> all the way up. Hype meter 100. <laughs> Hype dial. Uh, I'm John Reisinger, and I'm yelling? realizing that taking notes is really helping me remember what happened the last time we yeah. had. <laughs> it's crazy how that works. I've started finally taking notes. Mm, uh, nine, well, are we close to 100 episodes? This is probably like counting the bonus ones. It's probably like 94, 95, actually, somewhere in there. This is episode three. <laughs> This is episode three and 94. True. Uh, for, for our new listeners, this is episode three, but we do have a campaign one. I'm sorry, Barbara, go ahead. No, I, have, you, I, you I didn't even tell it. my character. That, that's what I didn't get to. Yeah. Uh, I play uh, Matisse Confucius, um, who is a Aarakocra monk. Aarakocra. Mm. Ghost uh, monk. Yes, a very important part. Uh, <laughs> I'm Barbara Dunkelman, and I'm playing uh, Elga von Braff, who is a female half-elf vampire barbarian. Probably other things, too. Secretly. Secretly. Mm. Um, very small. I, I realized also listening, um, like, these are obviously very different characters. We're playing different classes and different races and stuff like that than the first campaign, but they're all similar in a sense. Like, there are some things that carry over. Like, at some points, Chris did sound a little bit like old gum gum. <laughs> yeah. Uh, old and gum gum. I'm playing, like, a, the tiniest character of the bunch again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess we all kind of have our own little... Uh, Flavors that we uh, you can't get away from. Mm. Like we're all real people. <laughs> like playing characters. <laughs> Thin uh, veil over who we really are. Start start the show, guys. Yeah, please. Well, <laughs> to get the to get the show started, we like to have a little warm up. So I think we you know normally we roll a D one hundred to uh, to pick that question. I think in the first episode Barbara rolled it, and I think yep. Blaine rolled it last time. Chris or John, uh, one of you uh, call it and roll a D one hundred. I rolled a one. You rolled a one. <laughs> Out of a hundred. Yeah. Wow. That's just, this is not going to bode well for your rest All right. So everyone's going to answer this, but Chris, you're going to kick it off. Uh, this uh, question is from Micah. Uh, hello, Micah. Our uh, writer, composer, uh, the, the DM behind the DM. Biggest fan. What does truth mean to your character? How important is it? Jesus Christ. What does truth <laughs> mean to my character? Yeah, that's what you get for rolling a one. I would say truth matters. I want it in the voice. Mm. Hey. <laughs> gum, gum came out for a second there. Ignore that. Get back, gum gum. I don't even remember. <laughs> Get back. Get in that box. <laughs> I'm looking for the truth always. Oh. That is definitely your. Oh, I just don't remember it. Just like your voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Who's next? Uh, one. Uh, someone else. Answer it. Hey, Jay Chipani here. Uh, Long time listener, first time caller. Truth. Is, is following your heart, you know? And, and it's doing what you think is right. And if you're doing something that you think is right, then that's that's the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even if that is a bad thing. As long as you it's in your heart, it's true. Just live your truth. Speak your truth. <laughs> Real uh, chaotic neutral energy there. He was saying yeah. that to a guy right before he was like slitting his throat. He's like, that's what truth is to me, partner. <laughs> <laughs> partner. <laughs> John, Barb? Uh, is it truth? I, uh, is it, it truth? It is... Uh, 
subjective to a certain degree. Ooh. Um, but I still find it to be quite important and and uh, a measure of the, the value of a person. Mm. Matisse a flat earther. You heard him. I mean, maybe uh, <laughs> Groteth is flat. Who knows? Oh, God. Is it? <laughs> yeah, we're not dealing. We're not dealing with Earth. I like Blaine looked above, around his mic to look at me. Yeah, <laughs> far blue is mine. Um, you know, I don't. I don't think there is really importance in truth. I think it's just a matter of uh, what helps you. You know, get by and get ahead in life. And you know, if you have to be untruthful to people to save yourself, that is okay. Mm. Uh. Ain't so that the, the truth? The truth is flexible. You yes, can, you can tell. Which of the four of us is actually a long-standing professional voice actor? <laughs> because no. <laughs> just straight into her voice while, while everybody else was uh, stumbling no, their way through. Did, you guys did great. And yeah, way to go, Chris. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Right, right, right. Round of applause for everyone. Let's get that hype meter all the way up. Um, hype too high. <laughs> can't maintain these levels of hype. The gray-suited man quickly hobbles over with his cane and falls to his knees next to her. Lorenza, can you hear me? and shakes her werewolfy in body in his hands. Lorenza! Lorenza! Boom! Thunderous skies begin to drizzle overhead. A voice cries out from the crowd. They killed her! They killed the wolfman! And the crowd begins murmuring. Murderers! <gasps> Murderers! What? Boom! Surely, surely they cannot be talking about that. Are they talking about us? A plump, mustachioed man wearing a cough uniform runs on stage armed with a hand crossbow revolver. Nobody move! I'm Chief Inspector Weezer! And you're all under arrest. With these ghastly events now fresh in your mind, we return to the present day. The four of you are standing at the top of the stairs of Wolfham Officer Force Station with none other than the gray-suited man you now know as the Alchemist. He slowly opens the door, revealing a thunderstorm downpouring outside. Behind you down the hall is the sound of whistles being blown, but they sound like wolves along with footsteps fast approaching. A voice calls out from down the hall. I'm Chief Inspector Weezer. Stop in the name of the law. I'm afraid introductions will have to wait. Quickly now. We must make a break for it and find shelter. The gray man hobbles out the door with his cane into the turbulent tempest. Everyone roll initiative. Oh my oh. gosh. Oh. Wait, so did we have a long rest between then and now? Because we've been in jail, just kind of hanging out. Um, no. Oh god. <laughs> uh, uh, 20. D set. Very good. That's 17. Uh, 12. <laughs> Five! For Elga. Oh, y'all you set them in order. All right, so you all, like I said, you all are at the top of the stairs fleeing this um, this cough station. Before you is the Wolfham Alleyways. So it's up to you to decide what you want to do, whether it's uh, try and escape or hide or face the cough constables head to head. And we're going to go around and we're going to find out what you guys think about that. Mm. Uh, Barney, you're first with a 20. What do you want to do? Wait, so we're in an alleyway and how many guys are around us? Uh, well, with you right now, currently, it's just the alchemist, but you do hear uh, Chief Inspector Weezer, as well as the sounds of other uh, constables uh, running up behind you. Behind us. What, what's ahead of us in the alleyway? You're in, like, the northwest corner of the alleyway, and before you, uh, immediately, there's uh, it, the alleyway proceeds a little bit, then branches off left and right. Okay, okay, okay. This is Barney's time to be decisive. Well, first can, in line. How far away are the people that, behind us? You don't know. I don't know. You just hear the sound of them yelling and approaching. Does it sound like they were like within 90 feet? It's hard to say because behind you, the alley, the, if you remember, the, it's a bit of a corridor. There's some branching doors on either side. That's where you recovered your stuff from the locker. That's where the interrogation room was. And then it kind of curves around to the side where some cells were. So you can definitely see looking down the hallway is less than 90 feet, but you can't see back around the corner. Okay. Just for fun here, Chris. Make me a, let's call it a history check. A history. Nothing's more fun than history. 17. Oh, yeah. cool. 17. Even though Barney has trouble remembering things uh, and his mind can be cloudy at times, there is one thing he does know is true and that he remembers. The use of magic is illegal in Atro City without a permit. Oh. Do we have permits? Could have put a lot of money on that answer. <laughs> Just dashed in. That, that, being, that being said, breaking out of jail is also illegal. So take it for what you will. Even here, <laughs> in a All right, place where there's uh, blobs and ghosts. Come on, let's run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we all like just sprint past and, and Barney. Then, and Barney, like, hobbles. <laughs> yeah. Look well, at the speed of that old man. Uh, What's Barney's hobble speed? Well, it's actually walking 30. So I guess oh. I'll, 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 
run to the um, whatever the left way you said? Yeah, do you have the option to the left or to the right? And I will, I'll give you a little more flavor here. If you want to proceed, like when you get to the intersection that go both left and right, uh, to the left are stairs that uh, go down a short way. And then to the right is just a flat alley that continues down. And then from which you can tell, it looks like it branches off again further down uh, to the right. Stairs to go down to like another alleyway type thing or to like a... Correct. Uh, go down the stairs. Okay. Uh, yeah. You... The man with the walker. <laughs> <laughs> I like to... Have... Well, we'll get out of like eyesight, right? Yeah. My head cannon has Barney uh, wearing Heelys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just like the sneakers, the little wheels on the bottom. That's yeah. how he could move so fast. Yeah. And he may be old and he, he may have a walker, but he can run. Yeah. <laughs> He's a speedy guy. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. okay. Yeah. So uh, you uh, you um, you encourage your friends to run, and uh, you take the left branch of the alleyway and make your way down to the bottom of the stairs. And can I ready an action? I can't. Yeah. Well, what did you have in mind? A sleep. Sleep. Like a sleep spell? You yeah. Sleep. Oh, okay. I was like, you don't no, want no, to no, go no. to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Bernie, now is not the time. The ready an action is just you taking out a pillow. Yeah. You want to like ready sleep in case what? In case the guys come around trying to fight us. Okay. So if like an enemy comes around, you're gonna. Yeah. Do you try to cast sleep? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably wait till like everyone moves and then cast sleep at gotcha. the end. All right. Uh, on that note, uh, I believe Mati, uh, uh, it's your turn. Yeah, uh, witnessing the speedy and decisive uh, movements of Barney, uh, Mati follows, and actually, once I'm at that, the my what's my range? My range is like thirty as well. Uh, Twenty-five. I'm slower than you. Once I get to the ed- ed- edge of that, can I, um, with my dark vision, see anything further down the stairs? Uh, make me a perception check. A twenty-five would also put you pretty much near the the end of the stairs as well. You're pretty close to Barney. You know, we're talking five feet. Here. Bottom of the stairs. Yeah. Uh, that's a twenty. So at the bottom of the stairs, the alley kind of takes a small, like a small diversion, a small path turned to the left. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, it's kind of an, a small open area. And in this open area, with your high perception, uh, you think you hear uh, a voice coming from the floor of the alley. Psst. Hey, over here. Uh, can I can I, can I, I look towards the direction where the voice is? Yeah, there's a, um, a sewer cover that's slightly popped open. The, so it's, a, it's a, like a manhole cover? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's... It's, it's slightly ajar. Yeah, I... To head towards that. Okay. Uh, so you'll do like a double move to yeah. get over there? Yeah. Yeah, you get there and like I said, you see the manhole cover, the sewer cover slightly ajar and under it, you see a familiar looking Abrellian who you remember as Quill, who you just met a few minutes ago uh, in captivity. Bonjour, Monsieur Quill. <laughs> Bonjour. If you want to hide, come down here with me. Could I do uh, like an insight check sure, on what his intentions That's are? That's just a trust fall. It, essentially. Yeah. Does that mean he also has somehow escaped his cell? <laughs> uh, that's another 20. Uh, Dang. Uh, well, 15 plus 5. Let me be clear. 15 plus 5. Your insight tells you that you don't think Quill is hiding anything. If anything, he seems a little ner- nervous. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Then well, he uh, should be hiding himself. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, just, he doesn't seem to be hiding anything <laughs> other than his corporeal body. Uh, I call back. Uh... Um, everyone, follow me. I found a friend. I'm in front of you. <laughs> I'm in front of you. He double, he double, uh, oh, oh, Matit yeah. double moves, so Matit is in front of you now. <laughs> Allons-y. And that's uh, Matit's turn. So you get in the hole? Yeah. Uh, I say you don't have quite enough to get all the way down, but you're up at the um, the manhole. Sure. Elga. Would I be able to hear Matit say that from where I am? Um, it's kind of rainy. It's kind of noisy in the alley. Make a perception check just for fun. How good are your elf vampire ears? Very good. 22. Nice. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Elga follows the voice of Matid to go to the left down the path. Uh, you also double move, I assume? Yeah, but my walking speed is 30. Oh, okay. So um, yeah, you, you would get there, caught up to Matid, but I'll say you would still be in the alley there. Okay. Uh, and I'll tell you what, just for fun, also, uh, Elga, roll me a d20. What's an Abrellian? It's a general term for, in our language, in our world, you would say like an alien. You said it was it, like a floating like, brain. Yeah, this particular Abrellian looks kind of like a bulbous floating brain with like a wide, sharp beak and no eyes and long tentacles. Oh, so, yeah. I remember that description. And you guys now. kept calling it an Australian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that now. Um, I really okay, watch, I rolled a, listen to the show. I rolled a 14. Okay, great. Thank you. What does that do? Uh, I don't know. Uh, what is going on over here? How do we get out of here? You guys just come down here and I think we can escape. But how did you get out of your cell? How are you? Where are you? 
Where are you? I'm down here in the sewer. Yeah, but you had to escape the cell at some point too. When did that happen? I don't know. There was a big explosion and the guards were distracted and there was a hole in the wall. So we ran out. That's all I can tell you. Okay, so I guess if you double move, uh, Elga, that we are at Chip Haney. Just to, because of the precedent we set yeah. here, why don't you roll me a perception check as well to see if you can hear uh, Matid calling out. Okie dokie. Uh-oh, that's a nine. You didn't hear Matid yelling for y'all to come this way, but you did see everyone run off and go to the left. Oh, jeepers creepers, better go that way. And then I run that way. All right, so you run. Yeah. Uh, with one move, you get to the bottom of the stairs. You get caught up to where Barney is. Okay. Uh, and you can see Elga and Matid uh, crouching down, looking uh, in a manhole uh, just a little up ahead of you. Okay. Well, then I, I want to assist Barney and make sure that he gets into the manhole before I do. Okay, so you're going to kind of uh, hang tight here, uh, splitting the party up uh, with Barney at the base of the stairs. I'll be okay. No, it's okay, Barney. Jay, right this way, right this way. I I, I know. Just help me. <laughs> Helping, being a helper. I'm just going to ready my, unless assisting Barney requires an action, I'm just going to like ready myself or whatever. So you're going one walk distance and then ready. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. to, to cover us. So yeah. Do you have anything specific in mind you want to ready or just like? I ain't got no spells. Follow the law. And it's illegal. It's illegal. That's right. Follow the law. Is it like a melee attack? I have a a rapier that I can prepare. Sure. You'll get ready to just make a melee strike if anyone shows up. I say, on guard. And then I'm like, yeah, Mathilde. Hey. (laughs) Hey. (laughs) Mathilde. Mathilde, me. Oh, shucks. Uh, okay, from where you are, uh, Barney and Chip, both of you, please make me uh, percep- one more perception check. Ooh, that's a 12. Four. <laughs> that's a five minus one. Chip, you're somewhat distracted uh, by everything that's going on. You're overwhelmed maybe with the smells and the raucous nature of what's going on. I do like the rain. Oh, do you? Yeah, very romantic. Barney, however, you, uh, you're you a little more focused since you maybe since you're prepared mm-hmm. and uh, you can hear the voices getting closer and you know that the, or you can tell that the coughs have now reached the the exit from the holding facility where you were uh, your previous turn. You can't see them yet, but you you can tell that they're getting closer. They're and pursuing. Yeah. From where I am, can I see any like open doors or windows or anything? Uh, further away, like the other direction, like not up the stairs or anything like that? Yeah, from where you are, you can only see up the stairs, like on this one corridor. Uh-huh. Everything else would be like to the left around a corner or uh-huh. to the right around a corner at this point. Uh, but there are closed doors and windows in this alley coming down the stair that you can see. And there's um, a sewer with a giant brain. Ooh. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to use thaumaturgy, okay? Uh-huh. And it's a spell. You're doing magic. Oh, no. And uh, I hope it's not bad. Anyway, I, I want to uh, create an instantaneous sound that originates from a point of your choice within range. And can I make the sound of like like a, a, a door slamming shut, like the other direction of where we didn't go? Yeah, and one of the options is you instantly ca- you instantaneously cause an unlocked door or, well, I see what you're asking, or a window to fly open or slam shut. Um, they were all closed, though. He's making a noise. Yeah, so you can make the noise. You can't actually close the door, though. But window or door, I should say. Then, yeah, I guess I'll just do that. Make the sound of, like, a door slam shut. Yeah. Okay. You have to cap it. Do you have to roll anything for that? No? No? Okay, I guess it's up to them to try to determine whether or yeah. not they can tell. Okay. Uh, let me make a couple rolls here. It's a distraction. Hope it works. You can't see them, so you don't know how effective it was necessarily, uh-huh. but you think maybe the uh, uh, the bulk of the sounds of pursuit are receding. Mm. As you're doing that, the alchemist uh, quickly shuffles past you uh, and gives you a, a pat on the head, uh, Barney. Well done. Uh, and he uh, keeps moving on towards the, the sewer cover that's further ahead. We're going in the sewer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there anything else you want to do, uh, Barney? Well, I guess I'll just keep going. To, I'll run. Yeah, you still have my movement. One movement. Yeah, which would be enough to get you there. Yeah, I'll do that. All right. Just because I don't want to make any assumptions. What specifically do you do with this move? I move and follow the others into the hole. Oh, gotcha. No one's in the hole yet, but they're starting to uh, begin that process. Mm-hmm. Uh, go ahead, just for fun. Roll me a uh, d20, uh, Barney. 16. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're able to catch up with everyone uh, looking in down into the manhole with, and you you see Quill uh, at the bottom. I made a door noise. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, uh, Matid, I didn't have you roll me a d20. Roll me a d20 just for fun. 19. Okay, wow. Uh, lots of good rolls here. What's what wrong? is happening? Sorry. Right. Um, Matid is, is, is a very interesting character. I'm worried about these d20s. Can't tell if Gus is happy about that part. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, what do you want to do, Matid? Uh, you, before you lies the open manhole, and uh, down at the bottom you see Quill. I jump down. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's only about a 15-foot drop. I drop down. Okay. Make a, since it is a little, little bit of a drop, just go no, in. No, 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 no. I'm an air croaker. I float down with those wings. Oh, oh. can you really extend them going through a manhole? Uh, at the very least, you can get down there okay. and get, and they're also very light. Okay. 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 I'll give it to you. Yeah. All right. So, Matid, you have um, jumped down the manhole uh, and gen- gracefully floated and landed in sewage. Like a um, feathery ballerina. What do I see? We, we Obviously, Quill is there with you. It's a pretty dim sewage tunnel, and it does not smell great. The smells are all, all kind of overwhelming. The smell of refuse and storm water. Uh, the walls are covered, you know, in moss and lichen, and it's generally not a very pleasant place. So I'm just in a big room? It's like a long passageway. Okay. Well, how much of my movement speed did that drop cost me? We'll say that took half of your move. Walking speed or flying speed? Flying. Okay. From here, you know, this is, you're at kind of one dead end and then the passageway appears to go head south a little bit and then kind of dead end and turn to the left. Okay. Uh, Which would be east. Yeah, Matisse going to keep going. So uh, I go... Head to the south a bit? Head to the south. How far does that take me? If I, uh, I can't fly down here, I assume, right? And no, it's pretty cramped. To get to the point where you turn, it's about 25, 30 feet. Okay, I, I can get to that distance. Okay. Can I get to the, the bend? Yeah. Can I look down the bend? See yeah, then from here, when you turn to the east, you see there is a, like a trough of refuse flowing and there's some planks over it to walk across to the other side. Mm. Uh, and on the other side, you see a, uh, a door. Oh, a door. Uh, as you walk away, a quill says, you don't want to wait for your friends? I am sketching ahead. Ah, yes, very good indeed. Okay, I'm there. Okay, Elga, you're still uh, in the alleyway. Yeah, um, I feel like Elga at this point wouldn't go down yet. I think she's going to provide cover for this manhole as the rest of her team goes in. Well, you know, I'm very strong and, you know, someone must protect this area and make sure we all escape okay. You are now my friends. You know, Elga was so heroic. Also, I'm hoping maybe one of them comes by because I am very hungry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're just uh, kind of delaying your action, making sure everyone gets yeah. in okay? And maybe could I like ready my great axe? Yeah, in case someone gets in melee range, you'll take a swing? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you got it. And here I thought Matid would take me under her wing. Uh, uh, That's uh, an Aracocra uh, uh, joke, yeah? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> ah, you're a giant bird. <laughs> I like how you just scream it at the end. <laughs> All right, that's uh, Elga, which takes us to Chip Haney. Oh, yeah. Do you, do you like? Do you prefer I call you Chip or Chip Haney? Mr. Haney. I, I realize I've been saying Chip Haney every time. I like Chip Haney. You okay. can call me, you can call, hey, you can call me whatever you want, partner. All right, well, so that I'm in the manhole thing, Barney's gone down. No, oh, no, no, no. Just Matid. Only Matid has only gone Matid. down. Only Matid. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, well, I was going to cover Barney, but if Elga wants to take care of that, then I'm going to go cover Matid. I don't want to get the party too, too separated. So I'm going to slip down this here manhole. 15 uh, foot drop. Uh, well, uh, I did mention in my past that I was part of the volunteer fire brigade, being a tiefling who was resistant to fire. I was putting my... Natural abilities, good use. So I, I feel like I'd be pretty proficient at going. Please tell me down. What, please tell me what holes. firemen do that drops them fifteen. Feet. Oh, you know the elevator shafts, <laughs> jumping, help, helping, climbing up, down. I'll tell you what. <laughs> make me a perception check. Oh, okay, this has nothing to do with the animal, does it? You got dark vision or anything? I do. There you go. I think both Blaine's character and my character have dark vision. That's a six. Okay. Yeah. Dang. Nothing? No, nothing. Nothing, huh? That's a six. Okay. Well, I want to do that thing where I, I, there's no ladder, right? Uh, no, it's just a drop down. Okay. Can I do that thing where I like put my hands on either side of the wall and then my legs on either side of the wall and then I just kind of use some of the friction to lower myself down? Or is it just like a gaping yeah, hole? It's kind of like a gaping hole that goes down. It's not just like a tube where you could do that. What you going to do? I'm going to look and see if... I'm a turgy, my old trusted thing. That's not going to do anything for you. No, you it's could, just got to be something here. You could probably land okay. Yeah, you could do a check. Aren't you like a rogue? I am. Are you supposed to be nimble? Okay, then how about I do some cool parkour where I 
jump from one wall to the next. <laughs> just, I'm gonna drop down the hole. <laughs> All right, just make me, just for fun, just make me a dexterity check. I'll give you uh, advantage on this one. Oh, that's a... No, no, not, not a save, a check. Oh. God, second campaign, still can't get those straight. Listen. Some people just don't. So we'll say that was a 20, okay. I was, I was, I was, we just convert the first one because it's just a plus two. Uh, so you rolled a 24, that should actually be a 22 because it's a check uh, and a 10. Those are the two we'll take. Wahoo. Uh, yes, yeah, so a 22, Wahoo. that's great. Uh, you uh, dive into the manhole and you're able to nimbly do a little tuck and roll at the bottom uh, and avoid taking any damage. Ah, right through all the sewage. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> what do I see? Well, I will say the sewage is off a little bit. Where Like where you land, it's actually kind of a dry spot. The sewage is further down around to the left where Matisse saw it actively flowing. Cool. What, uh, do I, what do I see? You see Quill down here, and you're at the northern end of a long rectangular room, and then down to the south, you see uh, Matit kind of peeking around the corner. Okay. I'm going to go as far as I can to get close to Matit. Okay. And then when I pass Quill, I say, oh, you must be the brains of the operation, because you're a floating brain. Wow, Chip. I've never heard that one before. Ah, uh, <laughs> high five. <laughs> <laughs> he puts out a, a, a tentacle with a, a claw at the end. Oh. Uh, actually, he puts up five of them. Oh, better high five them. This is new for us. We just learned this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, that was Chip Haney. That takes us to, oh, back up to Barney. All right. Uh, actually, oh, I'm sorry. One second before you go, I have to make a couple rolls for myself. It's the guy who's pursuing us. Okay. Uh, yeah, that takes us back up to Barney. Okay. Uh, Barney's going to hop down. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. How's this going to go? Uh, gracefully. Um, <laughs> and Barney has really good night vision, like 300 feet. Does that help you fall? Oh, it helps him see. <laughs> and he, and it helps him see where he's landing. He can see the danger as it hits him. He can him. see all 15 feet <laughs> of <Yep>. the drop. <laughs> all right. Uh, go ahead and roll me a uh, dexterity check, please, uh, Barney. Dexterity check. I got 20-20 vision. I can fall like the best of them. <laughs> or acrobatics, even. <laughs> if you want to put a little fancy flourish, you can do that. Yeah. Do a little acrobatics. Yeah, has a higher acrobatics. Yeah, modifier. he wants he wants to jump down and do a flip. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm, what I'm picturing is like in gymnast routines, like you put your walker down and you do like a handstand straight up from it, and <laughs> yeah, then you like yeah. push off and then yeah. do a flip and then uh, you know grab the the walker on the way down and uh, land with it uh, in a handstand again at the bottom. Yeah, I want to do that. Okay. I've lived over a century. I've never seen anything like this. All right. <laughs> Uh, definitely have seen something like eight. this. Then. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen an old person fall down? Yes, many times. <laughs> this is very familiar. How's this going to go? How is it going to go, Gus? Make uh, him fall. Yeah. Make <laughs> him fall. Yeah, uh, you, uh, in your mind, it looked way different than the actual execution. Does he get even into the hole? Uh, we'll say, yeah. Uh, <laughs> he you, just flips over it. He just flips over the hole. <laughs> you, manage, <laughs> you manage to fall, not gracefully, into the hole, landing at the bottom, uh, and you take four points of damage. Oh. 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 My hit. <laughs> I'm down to it was probably loud too because he's got this like big old walker that's made of metal clattering on the floor with yeah. him. Do you have, like fell on top of him. Magical, say, magical life alert or anything? Yeah, I'm at one. I have one health. <laughs> oh, because no. I'd already taken four damage from like a. Oh no, we're so tiny. That's okay. I'm I'm okay. Uh, as a bonus action, I want to cast healing word on myself. Okay. What's your healing word? Binge. <laughs> Binge. <laughs> this podcast is not sponsored by Binge. <laughs> We're, uh, we're, we're an icy hot group here. <laughs> uh, five. Ooh. I'm back. <laughs> that was the minimum you could have gotten. But. I yeah. <laughs> I feel like the bones would be cracking as he got back up. Okay, is that it for you, uh, Barney? Can I go any further? You would still have movement if you wanted to. You could probably catch up to uh, Matid and Chipani down to the south okay. if you wanted. Yeah, I'll do that. With with, with Dexterity that surprises you. Barney bounces wow. from the ground. You hear it clunk. You know when you call out things like that, he's gonna make you roll. No, to no see I'm if just saying. That. I get back up. I get back up. Like fast. all you guys have to do is said, "I walked here," and he won't make you roll. <laughs> I'm just to I'm see just, if you're gonna give yourself I, two more pit points of damage. No, I'm just. I'm not. I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just. I'm trying to uh, 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 describe it. What happens? <laughs> you know. Okay. So like I hit the ground with a crack and you don't know if it's the ground or my hip. <laughs> and then I go, Hoy! Binky. <laughs> okay. I see hot. Okay. I see hot. And then uh and then and then I wobble towards you guys. Wobble? Yeah. Hobble. Hobble. There you go. Wobble hobble. Well, I mean you did get hobble, take baby, some damage, hobble, so you may have yeah. wobbling. 
Um, all right. Is, is So you join them to the south. Is that it for uh, Barney? Yeah, he's had enough. The whole gang's here. Uh, not, not Elga. <laughs> I'm still up here. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Be uh, careful. The, the alchemist uh, is still up above uh, ground as well. Yeah. And pats you on the back, Elga. Why, thank you, Elga. Much appreciated. Uh, and he uh, walks over to uh, a nearby wall, picks up a ladder, and tosses it down the uh, the manhole. What are you uh, doing, and Gus? Walking down. What are you doing here? Or using the ladder. Where what? did this ladder come from? It's the ladder you didn't see when you rolled a six on your perception check. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I hate <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it man. all comes back. Uh, sometimes you don't find out what the rolls were for. Yeah. Sometimes the sometimes alchemist shows you. I'm glad I have closure. Uh, so yeah, the alchemist tosses the ladder uh, down the manhole and begins scurrying down. Boy, am I glad that I waited for you because <laughs> I would have hurt myself trying to jump. Sometimes patience is the key, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, that being said, however, it is Matid's turn. Oh. So from your perspective, what you see, again, Elga is not down yet. Uh, the alchemist is staying with Quill under the manhole. Uh, you are surrounded by Chip and Barney. And then to the east from where you are is like a trough of refuse and sewage with planks over it, leading to a small platform on the other side with a door mm. that's closed. Yeah, I, I crossed the door. Over the planks? Yeah. I feel like Matee to be able to traverse this with ease. Mm. It is your duty. Um. <laughs> <laughs> God, that took a while for us to get to a poop joke, duty. <laughs> yeah, you begin uh, crossing across to the door on the other side. And uh, while you're doing that, you hear the alchemist. Perhaps we should wait a moment for all of us to regroup. Sorry, I'm holding up the tea. Matee proceeds. Okay. Uh, yeah, you proceed. And then right across is a door that appears to be closed. What uh, is it? Uh, what's it's, a like? it's a wooden door. Big old wooden door in a sewer. Can I listen to see if I hear anything on the other side of the door? Yeah, make a perception check. Actually, can I do this? So I want to do incorporeal movement. Ooh, that's a new one. And can I stick my head through? So um, for our listeners, uh, incorporeal movement is an ability that you have as a ghost, which allows you to once per short rest, you can use a bonus action to move through other creatures and objects as if they were difficult terrain for up to one minute with concentration. And if you end your turn inside an object, you take some force damage. So Correct. since this would take less than a minute, you would want to use your incorporeal movement to stick your head through the door yeah. and see what's going on. Yeah. Uh, you stick your head through the door and look around and it's a fairly small room. If you had to guess, I don't know, 15 feet by 15 feet or so. And at the Northern end of the room, there appears to be a pretty large pipe that's dripping. It's like kind of rusty and looks kind of old and falling apart. Uh, and to and make me a perception check for anything beyond that. You said the pipe that. was at the other end of the room? Was at the north end of the room. So you're approaching from the west side. Yeah, yeah. So you have to turn to your left. You see this big pipe. And there's a pipe like in the ceiling or in the wall? In the wall. Okay. Uh, and then make me a perception check as well. Perception. Oh, six. Yeah. And it's just a tiled room with the dripping water pipe uh, up to the north. How big's the pipe? Are we talking like a normal size it's, pipe or like Mario? It's pretty sizable. <laughs> Not quite Mario size. It's... It, I don't know what normal size pipe is, but I if mean, you like have, a like a sink pipe or like oh no it, no bigger than that. If this is more like what you would expect, I would say if you ha if I had to take a guess as to the diameter of the pipe, it's probably let's say eight inches in diameter. And there's and I don't see any creatures in here. No, you do not see any creatures. All you can really see is the pipe that is um, okay dripping. But can't fit us up it. I assume if it's eight inches. Oh no no okay. You're not you're small, Elga, but you're not that small. Oh thank you. <laughs> uh, I bring my head back through and I I'm gonna wait. Okay. Hey there, Matid. I ate a burger last week. I don't think it fully digested. Can you take a look into my stomach with that there magic power? <laughs> see what the ruckus is and in there. End the turn right there. <laughs> You've got a minute. Yeah, I've got a whole minute Plenty of, of it. time. I am sorry, that is not how I use this ability. Doki doki. Matid uh, is now is waiting outside the door. Uh, that takes us to Elga. You are the final remaining person up above ground. And do I am I aware that anyone is getting close, or does it seem like they're make a perception check? Yeah. This is where Elga puts the manhole cover on and goes off on Elga's own side adventure. Fourteen. <laughs> now available on Spotify wherever you find podcasts. <laughs> it sounds like the pursuers 
might have gone in another direction. Perhaps uh, Barney's subterfuge worked and distracted them. Okay. Elga will go down the manhole and could she also put the cover back over? Look at you, thinking ahead. <laughs> Smart. Uh, yes, absolutely. Since the ladder's there, it's easy enough for you to wait and uh, pull the manhole cover over. You know, Barney, give yourself an inspiration day. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Go ahead. <laughs> Salutations, my stinky supporters. Have you checked out our merch at store.roosterteeth.com? We've got stinky dragon shirts and hats, gum gum and bark mugs, posters of the party from our previous campaign, and of course, Smarsh is King decals. Plus, we've got some new items coming soon. I can't wait to share with you. Trust me, you don't want to miss this stuff. So give us a follow at Stinky Dragon Pod or on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Plus, as an added bonus, if you post uh, on social media using hashtag Stinky Dragon Pod, we might name an NPC in the show after you. Today's episode is sponsored by PayPal Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. I don't know about you all, but it seems to me the price of eggs, gas, movie tickets, you name it, it's all on the rise due to inflation. Uh, when I find myself in a situation where I can find a good deal on something, I feel, you know, kind of like a kid opening gifts on their birthday. Well, thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. In case you don't already know, Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes, applies the best one it finds to your cart. It's super easy to use. When you're checking out on your favorite sites, the Honey button appears. All you have to do is click apply coupons. That's it. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. It's an absolute game changer whenever I'm um, shopping for stuff online. Normally that coupon code box is just like taunting, right? Like there's money you're leaving on the table. Honey makes sure that I get all the savings I can. It goes through every possible code it can find and saves me money directly. Like, And it will show you exactly how much money you save. That's money going back into your wallet. Well, it's actually it's money that never left your wallet. Who wouldn't want to save money without having to really do any work? You just install Honey. It's that easy. Trust me, I'm lazy. And even I use it and I can save money. Honey doesn't just work on desktops. It also works on your iPhone. Just activate in Safari on your phone. Boom, save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. By getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash dragon. That's joinhoney.com slash dragon. Hey everyone, want to take a moment to remind you that RTX 2023 is happening this July 7th to 9th. RTX is my favorite time of the year, hands down. I get to interact with all of the amazing people that give us the opportunity to make content. It's really a celebration of all things Rooster Teeth. It's got panels, special guests, community artists, cosplay, more, uh, exclusive reveals, meet and greets with Rooster Teeth talent, special merch available only during the event. We just unveiled some of it the other day. We got the... Travis the Bat and Willie the Armadillo. I am in love with Travis and Willie. I want to buy all of the, the merch that we release. I've already told them, like, put me, I'm going to be first in line getting that stuff. Uh, we're changing up how the convention feels this year. It's going to be awesome. I mentioned a mini Epcot style convention show floor with different attractions and activations from your favorite Rich Teeth brands, all wrapped up in a summer camp theme. It's summer camp for indoor kids with Face Jam's Rat and Grackle Pub, a Red Web Escape Room, a Bleep Face Museum, a Chiba Hunter Mini Golf, and even more cool stuff to do that we're saving for attendees to experience. This very podcast will have a panel. We're going to be doing some special stuff. We're coordinating some special D&D experiences with some special guests that you may be familiar with. I can't say anything more right now, but uh, please come to RTX and you can see it for yourself in person. Thanks for listening to me get very excited about RTX. Looking forward to meeting all of you there. Head over to rtxaustin.com to get more information about the event and buy your badge. Uh, yeah, so you uh, clamber down the ladder and meet up with the alchemist and Quill who are still standing at the base. As you're getting off the ladder, you hear uh, the alchemist and Quill are having a conversation. Thank you, Quill, was it? Hey, don't mention it. If you don't mind me asking, why were you guys locked up in the first place? Quill actually turns and looks at you, Elko, well, when he asks that. Uh, well, you know, my memory has been coming back to me a little bit, and I, I think that they wrongfully think that I was involved in a murder. Ooh, a murder? And, you know, I've done plenty of murders, but this one I did not, yeah. so... Yeah. It really hurts when you get accused of a murder you didn't exactly. do. Exactly, yes. It's very, it's, it seems personal in that case. <laughs> yeah. I've done a lot of murder in my day. I, I won't lie You're about it. You're not there. It. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you, you proceeded to the south. You're not there. <laughs> we just hear yes, him talking it's to just, himself at the other end of the room. Oh, yeah, back in my day, did lots <laughs> of murders. The alchemist uh, looks at you, Elga, and says, Well, for what it's worth, I don't think you or your friends were involved in the murder of Lorenza either. You were, you were on the stage with her, right? Were you close? Oh, yes. I've known Lorenza for many, many years. We met when I was still a custodian at Lofton College. She helped me get my life back on track and establish at their asylum to provide alchemical care for those seeking refuge. Ah, Goodwill Hunting. Good movie. 
<laughs> but I think perhaps we should try to figure out who is behind this to clear our names. Wait, so uh, really quick, the alchemist, was he the one that was doing the phony magic tricks or was he the one that came to her aid? The alchemist or, came to the aid. Or was okay. that Zuzu okay. Top? Correct, Zuzu Top. Oh, excellent. We don't like Zuzu Top. Hey, Barbara, another inspiration deck, just for you. <laughs> I haven't uh, given I, myself I, one. Actually, I'll tell you what, since everyone was able to successfully hide and get down here and evade the cops, everyone you can go ahead and actually get an inspiration die wow. and you can all take a short rest as well. Wow. So I had an extra inspiration die there. We're out of combat then. Yes. That was a tough fight. Yeah, I'm fully at full health, so I don't really know. I'll take it. The alchemist says, Speaking of Zuzu Top, perhaps that's the place we should begin our investigation. He was on stage with us, after all. That is true. Uh, by any chance, did you uh, collect any evidence from the scene of the crime? Perhaps, you know, like uh, DNA sampling, blood, <laughs> maybe a, her blood in a bag or sippy cup. <laughs> 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 I'm afraid not. All right. You don't happen to know anything about Zuzu, do you? Because I don't know much about them. I know nothing about You're Zuzu. not there either. <laughs> Can you guys please keep track of where you're standing? Okay? They don't that's, again, that's Barney talking to himself. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where Zuzu talks. No, yeah, Chip, yeah. No, you know, I, I haven't spent much time in the city, so I've never actually heard of Zuzu Top. At this point, uh, Quill also chimes in. I mean, I don't know Zuzu personally, but I might know some folks who do. But I don't know how I feel about squealing on another Abralian to some Ordies like you guys. Zuzu is Abralian? Yes. Okay. Do you want to try to do anything to uh, persuade Quill to help you out? Would I be doing this or would uh, the alchemist be trying to do that? I'm yes. asking if you want to try. Yeah, I'll try. Yeah. I, I guess... Could I do an insight check to see if he's telling the truth and maybe he knows more about Zuzu than... Well, he's saying he does know more. He just doesn't want to talk about right. it. Right. He doesn't mm. want to squeal to you Ordies. Well, you know, you can trust us and like you wanted to help us in the first place, get us down here, which means you must like us to some degree. So maybe if you tell us, you know, we could all work together. That's true. But just to sweeten the deal, you don't know any gossip, do you? Oh. Anything juicy you could share with me? Juicy. Oh, juicy blood. <laughs> so hungry. <laughs> well, you know, the other day when we were in the jail cell and I overheard two people talking, it sounded like someone said something bad about someone's mother. Oh. Yes. I don't know what oh, I, I, I was. I was like leaning in like, you. what What you hear, Barb? Yeah, don't you remember? I'm not there. You're on your own, member. Don't you remember, oh God? <laughs> Think deep down in your I, brain, remember? Uh, his tentacles are quivering with excitement. Just make something up. Have they not caught up yet? They, they went the other way. No, uh, we're just at the bottom of where the sewer Oh, yeah, they haven't caught up. Yeah. Are you talking about them, the, the group of the three uh -huh. of them? Yeah, they're still standing there talking. Uh -huh. yeah. Gavin. We're gossiping. Mm. Right, Quill. Gossip. Just a bunch of gossipers. All right, all right. You got yourself a deal. I'll help you find Zuzu. Nice. I'll tell you what. He's probably holed up somewhere in Area 15, hiding from the cops like us. But I should tell you right now, most of Braylians aren't just gonna flap their yaps to a bunch of Ordies. What do we need to do to convince people typically? Hmm, well, everyone's a little different. Some might need a little bit of gold across their palms. Some might want a little bit of gossip. Some might take a little bit of muscle. Seems like gossip is a very popular uh, commodity. Knowledge is a very important currency. Don't underestimate it. Mm. Jack brains. <laughs> The, the alchemist chimes in here and says, I think it would be best to leave that to the four of you. I fear for my family's safety, and they're probably worried for me as well. I need to find a secure way to contact them, but once I do, I can reach out to some of the contacts of mine. I can find out about the other clan leaders and see where they are. Could we have walked over and joined them? Because, yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, no one said they wanted to, yeah. so. Yeah, Barney, uh, you walk up as the, the alchemist is, is explaining this. This will give me time to gather supplies for us. Once you all finish following any leads, let's reconvene somewhere safe. Perhaps here in the sewer. Why did you break us out of jail? Because I knew you were falsely accused, as was I. And we're the only people I can trust to find the real murderers. Mm. I didn't know you could trust us. We just met. <laughs> do you trust us knowing that we didn't do it because maybe you had some involvement, mm. Mr. Alchemist? Oh, absolutely not. 
As I said, Lorenza and I have been long friends. Uh, you know, murders and uh, homicides are often committed by people closest to the victim. That's why we're investigating Suzu. They were closest of all. Barney looks around and takes a step back. <laughs> Elga, Elga listens to a lot of true crime podcasts. <laughs> Podcasts in this realm are just birds that fly around and tell people stories. That <laughs> Quill says, if you don't mind, if you could actually help me navigate the sewers to reach Area 15, that would be much appreciated. Oh, what kind of navigation do you need? Uh, if someone could please hold my tentacle. You know, after all, I don't have eyeballs. I experience the world via sound, and all the sounds in the sewer are a little overwhelming to me. It's very difficult for me to get my bearings down here. Okay. Do you want to get on my head? I'd love that. Quill the Abrillian uh, <laughs> uses tentacles to steady himself, and uh, he, I would say he attaches himself to you, but it's not like he's not latched like onto you. <laughs> not, like, not like that. <laughs> like, a, like a bonnet. Rest, yes, yes, yes. Resting like a, a fancy brain hat on Barney's head. Hey, look. What, what is this brain sucker doing? I don't know. What is this brain sucker doing? He's starving. <laughs> uh, I said. Come on. Did you just call yourself stupid? Come on, Chris, that's a hat on a hat. <laughs> what happens next? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, the alchemist says, Okay, so it's settled. We'll reconvene here in the sewer once you have some information and once I have supplies. I'll leave you to it. Before he goes, mm -hmm. um, could I have some of his blood? <laughs> what? Like, could I accidentally, like, shake his hand but, like, scratch his finger with my nail and be like, Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me kiss the boo-boo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure, why not? Um, Here's some, so, some like, rolls. Yeah, to shake his hand and scratch it. That's sleight of Let's hand. Let's say sleight of hand. That's definitely sleight of hand. I'm using my inspiration to... <laughs> Come on, what'd you roll? What did you roll? An eight. Okay. Nat 20. Nat 23. <laughs> 23. <laughs> <It's dry. laughs> yeah, so yeah, you extend your hand and the alchemist eagerly, you know, extends his hand as well to shake it. You give it a little scratch. Ouch. I'm so sorry. Let me kiss it better. Uh, you know, old family tradition to make it heal faster. <laughs> make me a deception check. <laughs> so much going into you just trying to get a drop of blood. Fifteen. Oh, he says, oh, I, I don't want to be rude. And then I uh, suck the blood out of his how, finger. How are you talking? Does, How many ounces? Uh, just like a little, little bit. Uh -huh. does, does that hurt him? No. No? Okay. This is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Party sees it all. Are you okay? Little does that give you life? It's just that I have something called uh, vampiric vitality, which is advantage against necrotic damage, immune to disease, but I require blood each day. Oh, okay, mm. so you knock this, you're knocking this out of the. Uh, so I'm just making sure I'm gonna. So you're nice. good for 24 hours then. That means that like however long this campaign takes, at some point one of us is gonna have to just be like, I'm well, here. I'm a ghost, so. Party, <laughs> you and me are on blood duty. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, you're able to lap up a little I bit of blood. I got diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a very wet kiss. Thank you, Elka. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Chip runs up and he says, oh, it looks like you got a cut there, bud. And, and I want to pull out some, like, antiseptic wipes and a Band-Aid that Are I you? have in my fanny pack. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you, you clean up the wound, make a medicine check. That okay. is not necessary. I always, I already kissed it. Oh, better. no, no, no. We're in a sewer. He could get an infection real bad. That is a five. <laughs> oh, no. Come uh, on. Got a little poop in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you try to clean up the, the wound, but maybe it's the dirty environment. Just some moss ends up under there. The bandage doesn't quite stick on very well. Uh, <laughs> were you, guys, the, the, were the, you prepared for the alchemist to get sepsis? The, the, this al the, the, the alchemist says, I can handle it. Thank you. I am an alchemist. Oh, okay, all right. Anyway, we'll reconvene here. So go okay. away. Join, join Mati, join Mati. Barney, Chip, and Elga, all three of you make me a perception check. Six. 22. 11. Chip and Barney, each of you notices small crumbs on the ground. Uh, some kind of food. Elga, your uh, your perception's a little sharper, and you can tell that it's small crumbs of cheese that heads down uh, and then to the east, kind of out by that. where um, <laughs> Matita is. Barney, put that down. So the you cheese goes towards where Matita is uh, yeah, and at the bridge? Correct, and passed seemingly through the door and everything. Does it matter what type of cheese? It's Munster. Thank you for oh. asking. Of course oh. it's Munster. How fresh is that cheese? Of course it's Munster. Monsters! Uh, it's, it does not appear to be very fresh. Mm. This is unbelievable. Moldy. Okay. You guys gonna join me? Oh, Moldy. you better believe it. There it is. Here we go. 
Okay, yeah, so uh, you all head down uh, south, cross the planks, and are, are at the closed wooden door where Matide is. I don't know, if Matide, if you have uh, shared what you noticed on the other side of the door. Uh, bonjour. I, is, there, is there only thing I can see in the other side of the door is uh, a pipe and, and nothing else. Mm. I've got a new hat. You do have a new hat. It's, it's, it's Treble. Treble? What, yes. what'd, no. you, what'd you? I think his name is Zuzu Top. <laughs> no, that is a different... Uh... Who is it? What's your name again? No, it's not. <laughs> Zuzu is Quill, the Quill, Quill. 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 Yeah. yeah, you all are looking for Zuzu. Mm-hmm. Does the cheese seem to go under the door through the... Yes. Um, there seems to be a dairy product <laughs> uh, on the floor leading into this room. Did you happen to see any mice or any other creature? Unfortunately, I did not. Well, luckily I'm not afraid of anything, so let's just open it. Okay, you gonna go for it? Yeah. Um, Elga tries to open the door. You open the door and uh, it appears as Matid uh, described it, with a large pipe that appears to be dripping uh, up to the, on the northern end of the room. Is it like pitch black in here? Yes, it's uh, it is very dark. Can you see in the dark? Yeah, we all have dark vision. I'm just curious if there's like if there's any source of light. Do we all, all, we all do? All four of us have dark vision. I do. Oh, oh, team yeah. dark vision. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, Elga goes in. Elga steps into the room and must make me a dexterity saving throw. Oh. Oh. Saving throw. Jesus, attacking. Oof. Uh, seven. It seems like a strange coincidence, but as soon as you step into the room, the pipe on the northern wall bursts open, releasing a spray of sewage, covering you and hitting you with high pressure uh, sewage, pinning you up against the wall. Oh, dang. So uh, freaking gross. Wow. Can, can Barney? <laughs> Elga, you take one point of damage. One point of what damage? What type of damage? Sewage damage. Oh, bludgeoning. Bludgeoning. Okay. Poop damage. Poop okay. damage. Uh, so it's just like, it's just still pinning you up against the wall. <laughs> no, don't open your mouth. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, it's so nasty. <laughs> Can Barney cast Mending? <laughs> you're still Man. being pinned against the wall by the water, and you're casting healing spells. No, Mending. <laughs> On the pipe. Oh, okay. Oh. I thought you were, like, healing her. She's still just being bludgeoned by sewage. <laughs> spell repairs a single break or tear in an object you touch. Uh, so it's a broken chain link, traps a broken key, torn cloak. Leaking wine skin, as long as the break is no larger than one foot in any dimension. Huh? It's eight inches. Uh, leaving no trace of the form. Yes, you have to walk into the room to do that. Uh, okay. Since it says you have to touch it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go up to it. And... Okay. Yeah, Barney, uh, as he would say, uh, Barney wobbles into the room. Uh, <laughs> wobble, baby, wobble, uh, baby. Goes up to the pipe and... Uh, Take your time, though, Barn. No rush. Right. <laughs> <laughs> conjures some arcane energies and mends the pipe, puts it back together. Back in my younger days, I sometimes did some plumbing. Wow, Barney, that's a heck of a story, pal. <laughs> <laughs> I do love this idea that Barney just has, like, the most boring, mundane stories from his earlier years. <laughs> uh, just so enthralled by it. Elga and Barney, both of you make me a perception check. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> 12. 17. Elga, now that uh, you've cleaned some of the sewage out of your eyes, you see a um, a rusty valve in the southeastern corner of the room. Does that seem to be connected to the pipe? You can't tell. It's just on the wall, so you don't know what's behind the wall or what it's connected to. Uh, could I go over to it? Yeah, it's just a very rusted up uh, valve. And is, is it the only valve in the room? Yes. I know you just fixed this pipe, but what if I turn this valve? Neato. <laughs> Do it. Uh, Elga turns it. Righty tighty or lefty Lucy? Oh, lefty Lucy. Oh. You, you try to turn it left, but it doesn't seem to be able to turn. Like it's already turned all the way to the left. It, there is no more. Um, Open all the way. Turn it right. I guess it's uh, righty tighty. It is. Ah. Turns it to the right. Yeah, uh, you turn it to the right, and nothing seems to happen, but it does go all the way to the right. Uh, and I forgot to mention, there is also a, another door in this room as well. Oh, uh, where's the door? Uh, the northeast corner, kind of opposite from where. Uh, the door you entered from was. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you're able to turn it all the way to the right. Uh, you can't discern anything that happens, but it does turn all the way to the right. Hey, Quill needed an exit. Could he fit in that pipe there, the poo poo pipe? Well, it's been mended. Okay. And I don't know if that would help him necessarily. Uh, this is a pipe that's shooting out. Yeah, we're trying to get him out of here. You're that's trying not, to get that's out that's too. That's not how pipes work. We want to keep him with us though. Well, we shut the valve off, so maybe the poo poo flow is stopped. I'm gonna go in this door. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, you walk up to the door. It's a, just a wooden, plain wooden door. It appears to be unlocked. Knock, knock. Do you knock on it? No, I say that. Oh. 
Uh, listen. There, there isn't. Uh, make a perception check. So you say knock, knock. You don't knock, but you intend to listen as if you had knocked. Yeah. He puts his ear up and just knock, knock. Knock, knock. You're a murderer. A serial killer. <laughs> a 12? Yeah. 12. You don't hear anything. Well, no one's home. And I open the door. Uh, no one's home and I open the door. A wave of sewage. <laughs> you open the door and you see a long room with a hunk of cheese sitting in the center. Uh, to the east is a dark corridor with a wooden slatted floor. To the north is a 10-foot drop into the other half of the room. And there's a pile of plank wood, uh, a stairwell, a sewer drain, and a ladder. A Cheese at the end of the room. Or in the center. In the center. Oh, in the center. Big and hunk. how far down is the dark corridor? Uh, the dark corridor is to the east. It's on the other side of the room, probably 20 feet away, 15, 20 feet away. What's in that dark corner? I have 300 feet of blind vision or dark vision. <laughs> Uh, you see a wooden slatted floor, and it kind of goes for a bit and then curves to the left. You really can't see beyond that. And in, in half the room, there's a drop off? Yeah, then to the northern half, it drops off um, about 10 feet to the other half of the room. And there's just a pile of planked wood, a stairwell, sewer drain, and a ladder over there. Not gonna lie, no clue what this room looks like. <laughs> cheese looks yummy. Eh? You know what, Bunny? You should go get some cheese. Okay. He's uh, a hungry feller. I'm gonna get some cheese. You want to? Grab it. I mean, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go and. Is this anyone's cheese? Do you mind if I have some? Yeah, cut the cheese, Barney. Oh, so you're calling out in general, not just to like your party? Yeah, I'm just calling out. Yeah, there's no response. I'll go join Barney. Mm. Can I? Can I cut some cheese? Yeah, the che- you you get closer to the cheese and pick it up, and it's pretty moldy and hard. Mm. Can I? Can I cut off the top layer and try and get to the? Soft? Yeah, you yeah. can absolutely do that. You have like a dagger or a knife or something. I see me cut off like the yucky part with. Yeah, I assume I have something. Here, right? let me get this for you, Barney. And uh, Elga comes over with her great axe and oh, cuts yeah. it in half. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. You know, on the the mold seems to be largely on the outside. Make me an investigation check since you're uh, picking up this cheese and looking at it, uh, Barney. Eleven? Okay. Yeah, I mean, the inside doesn't look moldy like the outside does. You gonna eat that sewer cheese? Yeah. Yeah? You sure about that? You yeah. You, you, you want to take a bite out of it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You take I, a, I cut some off and I'll, you know, a big chunk to okay. keep some for myself. And so then, you don't bite it. You cut off a piece. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Or I guess I get with the help of, of the axe. You take like out the fresh cheesy core. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. You take a bite out of it. Uh, make me a constitution saving throw. 17. Okay. It does not taste great, but um, you, you think you can keep it down. What? It's cheese. <laughs> Is it, it, does he know if it's just like regular old cheese? Seems like Munster. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing extraordinary about it, I should say. I don't think I've done like a perception check for this room. Can I, can I look around a little bit from the doorway? That sounds like a good idea. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Please, Matit, save me from the puns. Uh, Only 12. Yeah, you don't really notice uh, anything else. Just uh, this room, the, how did I describe it? There's a, the, 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 what do you mean by there's a drop off? Like, is it like, it, like go, it goes down to a lower floor? Correct. It's like 10 feet down uh, and that's to the north. But you said there's a ladder nearby, right? Correct. Okay. Can Matit go get the ladder and put it, uh, or actually, I don't need to. I'm going to jump. Okay. Yeah. You jump down to the lower level. Yeah. You know, this is also a long room with a small stairwell bending around a sewer drain. On one side is a portcullis and on the other side is a ladder. Where you came from, this southern end, this is just a pile of planked wood stacked up against this 10-foot wall that leads up to the other half of the room. There's a portcullis? Yeah. Is there a... It's closed? Correct. Can I see through it? It's like portcullises are usually see-through. Yeah. You want to go check it out? Yeah. Yeah, you go over and look and the portcullis appears to be unlocked. It's kind of discolored. Maybe it's been you know, down here in disrepair for a while. The heck is a portcullis? It's the those gates in front of castles that are like spiky and, and like a, that see-through gate that kind of like oh, covers the mesh. entrance. Yeah. Mesh, like wood gate. I have to look it up. Behind like a drawbridge. Yeah. 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 It doesn't appear to be like a very big space behind there. Maybe just a, um, like a small closet, perhaps. Hello? Is anybody in there? Make a perception check. 19. You get no reply, but you hear like, you hear uh, scurrying noises coming from the other side of the portcullis. All right, let's put two and two together. Is there a device to open the portcullis anywhere near me? Yeah, you can, uh, you're able to um, open it up. Yeah, I open it up. Hey, Mateen, not show best idea. Uh, you're not seeing this. It's a cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down in, in, in a hole. Yeah, you open up the portcullis and a, like a swarm of rats come out from the portcullis and begin running all over you. 
all over your body. Okay. Could I try a action of flying back up? You went down, uh, uh, released the rats. Yes. (laughs) You can absolutely fly back up. Okay. You take to the air and fly back up to the upper level. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Uh, You fly back up up to the upper level. To everyone else's horror, Matit rises from the lower level. Flying, covered in rats. <gasps> is there is there any sort of action I can do to try to spin and get them off me? Yeah, I'd make a let's just call it a, a dexterity check just to try to fling them against the wall. Fifteen. Yeah, almost all of the rats fall off of you onto the ground below and make a beeline for Barney uh, oh, no. and the cheese that he's holding. Oh, no, uh, they begin crawling all over you, uh, snatching the cheese out of your hand, eating it. Wait. I'm going through all of your the folds of your clothing, looking for any ah! other food that you may have on you. Can I can I push the big block of cheese away? Uh, yeah, you can like toss it. I guess it was still in your hands, right? Yeah, yeah, but also the one I the one I cut. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I give him the cheese. I give him the cheese. So but- Matid down in the hole, there was the the gate that they opened. Yes. And all the rats came out. Yes. What what else was down there? So this was there was like a a stairwell that bends around a sewer drain. And at the right side was this portcullis that uh, Matid opened. And then to the left side of the sewer drain was a ladder that went back up. Okay. So yeah, it's kind of like the sewer drains in the center of the northern part of the room. And then to the right of it was the portcullis. And then to the left of the sewer drain is the ladder. A sewer drain what size? It is pretty big size. I, I, you don't think a person could fit through it, but okay. it is very, very large, very sizable. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. And to, I guess, give closure to Barney, mm-hmm. uh, when you throw the cheese, uh, all the rats jump off of you and begin, you know, following the cheese, eating at it voraciously. I was going to say, maybe what we should do is bring the cheese down the hole, throw it on the other side of the room for the rats, and then go the opposite way. Well, the, the rats are just distracted right yeah, now, they're yes? Yeah, no, they're no longer interested in Barney. They're, they're, on, they're on the cheese. cheese. But it's only a few rats that you brought up with you, right? Yeah, are there more rats still down yeah, below? Yeah, there's still some down there. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, Matisse hears what, uh, what Elga is, is putting down, and since you split the cheese, Cut the uh, cheese. can I throw the cheese on the opposite side of the room from the pork pulse? Uh, when you say, just so I'm clarifying, the pork pulse is in the northeast corner, do you mean, like, the west corner or the south corner? To the west is where the ladder is, but then down to the south is where the plank is. Is the ladder just a ladder sitting against the wall, or is yeah, the ladder and it goes, goes up to another level? Um, it goes up somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah, I want to I want to throw it to the, towards the portcullis. Okay. Yeah. You throw you toss the cheese back to the portcullis, and the rats all you know scurry towards it and uh, begin eating it. We're not in any sort of initial order, right? No. Okay. I'm gonna go for the ladder. That was terrifying. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, you handled yourself very well. Why did you summon rats? <laughs> Uh, Chip Haney, you uh, hop down to the lower level uh, and then walk off to what would be the left side uh, and go up to the ladder. It's just a ladder that's uh, resting up against the wall, leading to a tunnel up to the north. Yep, we're going to climb the ladder. Okay. But I, as I pass the rats, I say, which one of you is his master splinter? Got it. <laughs> the, the, the ninja turtles. No? <laughs> okay. Chip has uh, climbed the ladder up to the north and is uh, um, on a tunnel up there. I follow. Okay. Um, I also follow. Okay. I follow as well. Okay. Are you going to get up a ladder with your walker? Well, I can do it. Okay. Um, he yeah, has you- like, a, like a Captain America thing where he just attached it to his back. To his back oh, is it like a up. folding thing that sometimes will just like kind of compress down into a smaller thing and you can just kind of like... Yeah! Yeah! They do, they do fold. <laughs> that also makes puppeting easier if we need to. <laughs> 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 all right, uh, you all climb the ladder up to a tunnel at the northern end of the room, and the tunnel runs either to the west or to the east. It's pretty narrow. It's only about 10 feet wide. Can I hear or perceive if there's, like, more outdoorsy sounds versus more, like, drippy undergroundy sounds? Maybe we should use our friend Quill here, who uses his sense of hearing very ah. well. Who's Quill? He's on your head. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Quill says, I wish I could help. There's just way too much sound for me to be able to discern very specifically. <laughs> very difficult. I'm going to scout to the west. Okay. I'll scout to the east. Okay. Since Chip said it first, I'll deal with him first. Uh, if you head out to the west, the passage kind of forks. There's a passage to the south, a passage to the north, and it continues to the west as well. Oh, so a total four-way split. More forks over here. Uh, to the east... Uh, Barney, the tunnel goes for quite a ways and then eventually dead ends uh, either heading north or south. Wait, it doesn't dead end. Well, it forks. There are no forks over here, (laughs) but there is a tunnel left and right. Oh, all right. And so 
Chip's in the middle of that four way and Barney's at the the T correct the T spot. Correct. Okay. Matit follows Barney. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. So and Barney Elga, to the east. Elga follows Chip. To the west. Okay. Uh, we'll deal with Chip and Elga first because Chip said he was going to the west first. Uh, Elga, you catch up to Chip and there is a, it's like a four-way, essentially, it's not quite right, but essentially a four-way intersection. There's a path to the north, a path to the south, and a path to the west. Can we just keep going west? Well, uh, should we just take this one by one? Yeah. Let's, uh, I guess, yeah, let's start with the west. Yeah, let's keep going west. You head west and the, the tunnel proceeds only a little further and uh, you come across a, a dead end and there's a small alcove with a locked damp chest. Right. right above the chest is a small metal pipe dripping with water. We got thieves tools. Let it rip. I could also just smash it. Yeah, what the heck, go for it. Could I try smashing the uh, lock off with my great axe? Yeah, uh, make an attack roll. Better not be one of them there mimics. Nat 20, 26. Ooh, really? Wow, good hit. Do you want me to roll damage? Yes. Okay. 22. Okay, so it didn't do it the way I would normally do it. So what we're going to do, so we would take the 10 from there. Uh, then we'll do for the second die, it gave you an 8. We're actually going to give you a 12 since you rolled a critical. Okay. Uh, so we'll do 22 plus 4. So it's actually 26 points of damage. Big okay. damage. That you bring down onto the uh, lock on Ooh, the chest. Wee. There's nothing fragile in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which uh, splits open. The lock just like falls off. I'm going to open her up. Okay, you go ahead. Uh, you open up the chest, uh, and inside is just a bunch of loot. There's a bunch of coins, uh, there's a, a, a chalice, uh, and a potion. Oh, you and me are splitting this 50-50. Oh, yeah. Uh, can we split the coins 50-50 and then... Yeah, there are a lot of coins. Uh, let me do some quick math here. You guys are going to run back down the hallway sounding like change, just clattering. We found nothing at all. <laughs> you didn't find a thing. <laughs> So, Do you remember early in the episode when we talked about truth? <laughs> <laughs> completely unrelated to this moment. So each of you gets 1,050 copper oh. pieces. Copper. Oh. Okay. 750 silver pieces each. Oh, it keeps going. Oh, wow. And 30 gold pieces each. Oh, yeah. We're going to find something great, Barney, okay? Yeah. And in addition to that, there's a, a copper chalice that has some silver filigree on it. And uh, do and we know a, what the and potion? A potion? Do we know what the potion is? Why don't you both roll an Arcana check? Let's see if maybe you do know something about this potion. Okay. okay. Ooh, I got plus three to Arcana. Still a ten. <laughs> I have a twelve on that. Rolling like the sewers today. Uh, you think it's perhaps a potion of climbing? Climbing. Ooh. Oh, uh, you useful. know. I think Chip, you want uh, this potion, then take the chalice. That sounds like a heck of a deal. All right. Is there any like particular thing I should put in my inventory? Just like a regular. Uh, just right, copper chalice. Meta game wise, uh, if you want to put this in parentheses or anything, uh, Barbara, it's worth about twenty five gold pieces. Okay. And anything else special about it that I should note down? Uh, nah. Is that the end of our thing, or can we? Yeah, we'll uh, sure? we'll wrap up with you guys there, and we'll we'll jump over to uh, Matid and Barney. Uh, you're at the eastern end of this tunnel, and there's a passage to the north and a passage to the south. Do I see anything down either of them? Uh, if you look to the north, it also tees going left and right. If you look to the south, it kind of bends to the left. We go to the south? It bends. Yeah, that sounds good to me. <laughs> it bends. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of creepy. Uh, Matit puts their wing on uh, on Barney's back. I like you. I like you too. You no, remind me of birds. <laughs> <laughs> you remind me of birds. <laughs> I like birds. <laughs> I am so glad to hear that. They're just a giant bird. Uh, yeah, do we see anything down here? <laughs> so you walk to the south a little bit, and as you begin walking to the south, to your right, there's like a gap in the wall, and you see like wooden planks creating a platform uh, that head out in that direction. And then continuing south, the path, there are some stairs leading up that curve to the left. Okay, the, the looking to the right, you said there was like planks... Yeah, it, I didn't quite get that description. Yeah, it's like some planks that are making kind of like a, a walkway. It's very reminiscent of the planks you saw earlier in the cheese room. Yeah, and can we see what's at the end of the walkway? Uh, it kind of goes out and then curves to the left, so it's hard to see. I feel like someone's God, we been are, here before. We are just going through a labyrinth at this point. Yeah. yeah. Y'all are doing good. There I'm are this. 17 directions to go in. Bunny, which way should we go? Well, let's follow the curve. Okay. Up the stairs? No, no, no. I meant the... the okay, because the, the stairs curve. The stairs oh. do also curve. I thought you meant the stairs, too. Oh, okay. oh. Okay, up the stairs we go. Okay. 
uh, y'all continue proceeding to the south. And then there is a curve, a, a bend in the path, and you go up the stairs uh, around to the left, and eventually it straightens out and goes into a long, straight passage that has a uh, a door to the right. A long, straight passage with a door to the right. To the right. Mm-hmm. It's a, a crooked door stained with water spots, and it seems like it's barely hanging on to its hinges. Do we have action in, left in us to maybe... It, it's, it's barely hanging on, so is there like a hole? It's like on the hinges. It's like falling off the hinges, basically. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Is it like, is there a gap because of that? Often if a door is oh, not... Oh, I, I see what you're saying. I thought you meant like a hole in no, the no, door. No, no, like if yeah. a door is not fully flush, it yeah. usually leaves a gap. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, can I look in the gap? Yeah, uh, beyond that door, you see a spiral staircase of dank stone steps that seem to be going up. I think we found a way out. Okay. Perhaps we should find our other uh, compatriots to come join us. Okay. Here's the plan. Uh-huh. You stay here, and I will go get them. Okay. I'm just going to wander off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, since you're going... Uh, normally, at this point, I would switch back to Chip and Elga, but since you're going back to find them, I'm going to continue with you here, Matid. Uh, how do you want to go back and find them? Wait, can I give you my rope? To do what? So we don't get them. Right how long's your rope? Because I think we've walked pretty far. You've walked quite a distance. Oh, right. foot rope. You know what? You know what? Actually, I don't you, even no, know. No, no, I've changed my. I've changed my response. Mati goes. I would gladly take your rope. I. I just realized I don't have a rope. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, do I have one? Maybe I do. Hold on, I want to give you a rope. Stick out your finger and have him take that instead. I don't. Playing a forgetful character is an easy way to cover up the fact you don't know anything about your character. I don't have one either. I don't have one either. Maybe you just use the fabric of your imagination. (laughs) I'll be thinking of you. Okay, that sounds wonderful. Matid walks down and... Back the way you came from? Yeah, but instead of going straight back to Chip and Elga, that passageway that we passed before we went up the stairs, the the planks... The the planks one? I want to check that out. You peek in there, and there seems to be a precariously constructed bridge made of wood slats uh, overlooking a deep, dark, moist crevice. Uh, Maybe it's like an unfinished part of the sewer or something. Is there something at the end of the bridge? Make make a perception check. A nine? You know what? I actually want to see. So I'm actually going to inspiration dice this. Oh. That's a 15. Oh, okay. About halfway down the bridge, you see a cat and you hear it mewing. Meow. Little cat? Meow. Yeah. Meow. (laughs) One more? (laughs) Meow. Okay. Or maybe it's Japanese. (laughs) Meow. Okay. Yeah. Can I check the bridge? How rickety is this bridge? It's very rickety. <laughs> okay. We I fly. fly. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, you fly, what, to the to the cat? Yeah. So okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you take flight and lightly set yourself down by the cat. Uh, it seems to be trying to get away from you, but it seems like it can't get away. Its paw is stuck in one of the slats. No! Oh. Uh, it's trying, it doesn't seem to trust you. It's trying to like, it's doing its best to try to get away and create distance between you, but it's, it's just stuck. Oh, uh, use your attack. Psst, psst, psst. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bonus action. <laughs> yeah, Matid uh, tries to do their best to calm the animal and gently re- wrestle them from their... Why don't we call that animal handling to try to calm the cat? Yeah, let's do that. Surely you have advantage on this. Why would Matid have advantage on this? <gasps> Don't need it. 21. Oh! Uh, yeah, the cat seems to, like, calm down and not be trying to get away as much and uh, allows you to get close to it. Whoa. Okay. It, it's, paw, it's right front paw is just stuck in uh, one of the planks. Now, hold on. We're at the end of a bridge. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're in the middle. This is in the middle. Oh, this is in the, in yeah. the middle of the bridge. Yeah. Cat stuck in the bridge. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I take the cat from it, and I suppose I I probably have some... Can we say I kept a muffin from my bakery? Sure, why not? In my pack? Yeah. I don't eat, but I kept... You know, I like to keep my wares with me. People like it. Um, and I give the cat a little bit of a, a muffin. Yeah, we'll say it nibbles at it. Okay. And we shall name you Muffin. <laughs> uh, make a dexterity check for me. This is worrisome. What color cat? Great. Uh-oh. First case of all the alchemist. I shouldn't have used my inspiration dice. I shouldn't have used it. I just rolled a one. <laughs> oh no. Uh, I shouldn't have used it. The cat leaps out of your hands and runs down the bridge further to the south, in the not the direction you came from, but down to the south and then turns a bend in the bridge to the west. Is it heading towards us? No, we're far from you. Should I, pre- I, I? I'm now feeling John feeling bad that I'm taking the story into my hands. No, I, I like I like what we're doing. I think it's Listen, important. Like this this should be our hands. party's new mission: is finding this damn cat. <laughs> I, I follow yeah. the cat because that's what I. Matit, but can I? I don't. I'm not rushing after the cat. Is yeah. what I want to make clear. Is I'm I'm oh. following it. Yeah. Uh, 
because I'm still in a very dark and mysterious place. Yep. Before Matid pursues after the cat, can I do just one more quick like check around the room? Another like because it, it, this is this is bizarre. Yeah, this just seems like perhaps this this area was under construction for like sewer expansion. And so it's at the end of a bridge now, and it went a, a bend. Yes, the center, they, it kind of makes like an S from where you were, comes down, has a couple of bends in it, and then exits out to the southwest from where you initially entered. Okay, I, I follow the cat. Yeah, you follow the cat, and you come back into the cheese room, and the cat is pouncing on a rat, killing it. Oh, I love it. I'm I'm delighted by this. This is fantastic. The rats are scurrying away in fear uh, oh, as the cat is, uh, is, is showing its hunting prowess. Ooh. Oh. Matid loves this. This is fantastic. Loving to see this kind of uh, action. <laughs> Um, and approaches the cat again with some more, like, muffin. Okay, the cat, you know, doesn't run away from you. It knows who you are. It knows that you're friendly. Uh, it does not seem interested in the muffin. It, it doesn't run away, but it's got a rat, you know, okay. hanging lifeless in its mouth. Can I check for, like, a collar? Yes. Uh, actually, it does have a very visible collar. That's why I'm not making you make a perception check. It, it, it stands out quite clearly. It, uh, it appears to be a, a leather collar around its neck. Is there a tag? Make a perception check for that. Okay. Just because you got to, like, dig around in the fur and stuff. There's Dracula. That's an 11. Yeah, there's a tag. Uh, I presume you want to read it? Yeah, what is it? Uh, there's no name on it. It just says, I know what I'm doing. What? Hmm. Very interesting. Cool name. Very. <laughs> Albanian, perhaps. No spaces. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. Can I, yeah, I, I, I can't let this cat just go. I'm so curious about this, this kitty. Oh, the you know what they say about... What kills the cat? You know what? The lion. Curiosity. I... Are there... There's a whole thing going on here. Are there still rats anywhere? Yeah, there are still a few, but they seem to be uh, uh, running away in a panic. Can I use my talons to, to swipe at a rat? Yeah, why not? That's like an attack for you, right? Like, yeah. Just make an attack roll. Which, actually, I have a talons attack. That's an eight. Uh, yeah, you miss. I miss. Yeah. You know what? I think I, I, I have, like, a bonus action for another attack if I'm making an attack. Go for it. Okay, then I'm going to do that. That one's better. That one's a 21. Nice. You connect, uh, uh, and the rat falls lifeless. I look to see what the kitty thinks of that. The cat just is, is purring. Okay. Can I motion for the kitty to come in my in my hands? Sure. Why not? What, your talons or your wings? Wings. My hands. Hands. Ooh. I have hands. Since you had such a high animal handling check earlier, I'll say you don't have to do that again. Okay. Uh, it, like, walks up. Can I try and gently put it in my little pack? Can I put it in my little apron pocket? Mm. You do have to make another animal handling check for that. Okay. You can do it. This is, there's so much writing on this animal. Believe yeah. in yourself. Mm -hmm. 13. Mm -hmm. That's a good roll. Yeah, you try to put it in, but uh, the cat doesn't really want to go in the apron. It's very focused on rats at it the moment. It knows what it's doing. It knows what it's doing. Yeah. Can I put it on my shoulder? Kitties like shoulders. Kitties do like shoulders. Uh, yeah, it, per it perches on your shoulder. <laughs> okay. Man, I don't know what to do now. But he's going to adopt this cat whether he likes it or not. Saying, hmm, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it's taking him a long time. <laughs> <laughs> if I start walking, does the cat stay on my shoulder? Uh, Yeah, it stays on your okay, shoulder. I like this. I go to them, to Elga and Chip. And we're just doing what you. So I follow back across the bridge, uh, back through the bend, and head west to them at their little... Uh, Freeway junction. Okay, yeah, you uh, you come back up there, and Elga and Chip Haney are coming from the west. Presumably, they've scouted out that area, and you meet them at that four-way intersection. I have good news. One, I have a little friend, and two, I think we have found a way out of here. What's your name, little feller? Matid. Mat oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> make, a, make an animal handling check. Thank you, Elga. Oh, okay. A hey, seventeen. It just, uh, you can tell that it's purring. It's got a rat in its mouth, and it seems very content at the moment. Ah, rat mouth. That's what I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to follow me, I will show you where we found a, a doorway that seems to be possibly outside. We have two other areas we could explore, but I don't really want to test our luck. What do you think, Elga? Oh, what did you find in uh, in your exploration? Nothing. Uh, absolutely nothing. nothing. And yeah. it came that, up zip, zip, zap, zap. That is so disappointing. We were playing patty cake. Yes. I, I don't understand why you were doing that in this situation. Boredom. <laughs> <laughs> because of the lack that's of That's a I want to check on that. That's, that's <laughs> us. Make, a, make an insight check then. Okay. And uh, make a deception check for me, uh, Chip. 13. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, they were playing patty cake. Well, we seem some people get bored when they are in interesting situations. Mm. Ooh la la. I see no problem here. <laughs> uh, would you like to follow me? Elga? 
Yes, I mean, if you found a way out, that is what we are trying to find, hey. so let's go. Yeah, if you can take some more kittens, we're, we're right out on your tail. <laughs> it's a nice pun. <laughs> I like when he says it. When he says it in character, you have to respond in character. <laughs> um, yeah, let's go join Barney and see what Barney's been doing this whole time. <laughs> Hopefully Barney's still alive. Hope he, hopefully he remembers you. <laughs> uh, yeah, My name's Barney. <laughs> you Actually, you've been alone. Quill's with you. Oh, oh right. Yeah, Quill is with him. Oh. <laughs> he's, what, Quill's what are you been talking and he's just been going, oh. Who is that? <laughs> There's voices in this tunnel. <laughs> you all head to the east where uh, the tunnel dead ends and head to the south to the stairs that take that bend to the left, head back up to the north and find Barney sitting outside of the crooked door. Barney, we found treasure. Paul? This cat. <laughs> that is a real treasure. That's right. I didn't find a thing. Oh, uh, that makes three of us. Yeah. So describe what we saw through the, what I saw through the door again. Beyond the door, uh, there's a spiral staircase with dank stone steps that seem to be leading upwards. This this door's a little rickety. I'll fix it. No, no, maybe you don't fix it so we could actually go through. Well, like, could I open it and then, like, mend the hinge while with I With what? It? Why would you need to? No, no, I'm curious with what? Mending. It was mending. Oh, you're going to cast yeah. a spell again. He's an old man. He Is likes to trip things. Yeah. Oh, it's a can yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if you want. Yeah. So you open the door and use mending to fix the hinges yeah. so that it... Okay, yeah. He feels purpose for mending things. Absolutely. He wants to help. Yeah, you open it up and the door, it, now it closes flush. It actually works. Oh, now that. And now it's locked forever. <laughs> <laughs> you all die of starvation. Uh, yeah. Rats Guess we're eating that cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look here. Now it doesn't squeak. That's great. Wow, he's like <laughs> trying to be like a father figure. He wants your approval. Uh, Bernie! That's a heck of a job. There he is. I got a squeaky door in my bathroom back at the old homestead. Oh? I might have you take a look at that. <laughs> I, I would be happy to. Oh, sounds great. Sounds great, Bard. Matit opens the door. Okay. Yeah, you open it up, and it's just like you saw before. Those uh, dank stone steps. There it is. <laughs> and a spiral staircase that leads up. I politely motion for the party to go ahead. As I pass, Matilde, I give the cat a little couple scritches. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it doesn't pay you much mind. It's focused on its rat. That's huh? okay. He Barney, what he's doing. he heads up, but, you know, stops to admire his work on the way out. Mm -hmm. So it's Chip, Barney, and then who's third? Uh, Elga. Elga, and then I guess, uh, Mati. Yeah. Uh, bring it up through here. Yeah, so you all, um, take the stone steps. There's water, so it kind of splatters with every step up. And you finally reach the top and find a corroded ladder leading up to a sewer cover. Ah, this should be Area 15, directly above here. Oh, how fortuitous. <laughs> and that so, fortunate. So many different directions to go, and we found it. <laughs> look, at, look at us. Way to go, team. And nothing else. What, oh, God, I've forgotten what Area 15 was supposed to be about. Uh, where, where Zuzu was being the, kept. Yeah. Or hiding out, I guess. The Abrelians, I guess. Yes. Are they from there? Area 15 is home almost exclusively to Abrelians. But like I said, be careful. They are very weary of ordies like yourselves. Ordies? What's an ordi? Ordies? Ordinaries like yourselves. Humanoids. Oh. Well, why don't I go first? Because this little fella's on my head. Well, actually, I have business here to attend to in Area 15. So now that you brought me here, I'll be on my way. What's the, how are we entering into Area 15? Well, you all are still um, at the bottom, but there's a, a ladder and a sewer cover. Okay, up yeah, at the we're, top. we're coming up through the right. floor. I mean, Quill, could we come out and, and visit, or are they going to shoo us away? Oh, you can walk around. Abraelians just might not be very friendly. Well, they don't have to be friendly to us, but we'll be friendly to them. Hey, gang? <laughs> huh? Yeah. 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 Mateen Nothing nods. but friendly. I'm used to people not being very nice to me, very wary of oh, my Oh, wait, friends. is that? I, I don't, you know, maybe it's because I'm a child and people uh, think that I've uh, lost my mother or something. Mm. That, is, that is so sad. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Wow. Hey. It's very sad. Yeah. Uh, the one good thing about being a child what? is you grow out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have an inspiration, Doug? <laughs> Yeah. How does that make Elga feel? Oh, it's just very dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> but great, thank you, Barney. I can't wait to grow up into oh a full God. adulthood. It's so Aging sad. Is a it's so sad. <laughs> Party, party is oblivious, I assume, to any of like, oh this. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. He's very content with himself. Okay. Well, since this is where we part ways, Quill. Yes. Thank you for all your help. Maybe you put in a good word uh, for the for us with the Brilliance. 
Right on it. Uh, I guess. Uh, he, he, I wanna, can I check on that deception? <laughs> <laughs> like an inside check. Twenty. Yeah, you don't think he's gonna. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I do nothing about it. What a nice hat. <laughs> can we go up. Yeah. yeah. Can we go up? Yeah. You lift the sewer cover, and your nose is filled with fresh air and the dampness of rain. Uh, it's difficult to say from the rainfall and cloudy skies, but you suspect it's sometime around midday. And the street around you appears to be mostly vacant due to the rain, save for a winged stranger slouched on the ground outside a shabby entertainment venue with a sign that reads Fly in Saucer. You should probably start there if you want to find Zuzu. Ah. And then he takes off down the street. Bye-bye. Yeah, I, I would just immediately go proceed towards there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Drinks on me, gang. I just happened to come across <laughs> a recent small fortune. Oh, when did you come across that? A while ago. <laughs> can I check that? Uh, At the parade. Yeah, yeah, you can do an insight I'm check on that, again. but you got to make a deception check. 24. Oh, oh, 14. <laughs> yeah, you can tell he's not okay. being forthright I, with you. Matisse notes this. Okay. Mm. So there is um, uh, this fly in saucer. Okay. Let's go in. You walk in, and it's a pretty gloomy pub with candlelit picnic tables along the walls and a bar with an enormous vat of iridescent blue liquid with chunks floating inside. Uh, the vat reaches to the ceiling and looks like it climbs up to the next floor. To the south is the main entrance which you walk through and to the northeast appears to be another door and to the northwest is the stairwell that leads to another door. And there is a uh, barkeep behind uh, the bar by the vat. Uh, I approach the barkeep and I say, hey barkeep, can I get four blue drinks? Ocean water? Soda pop. Soda pop. Yes, please. Four soda pops. The um, barkeep pours four soda pops and hands them out to you. Four gold. Four gold. That's a lot. Of oh, they're expensive. Uh, can I perceive that this is actually how much those things cost? Make an insight check. I think he sees we're tourists and he's trying 14. to... 14. Yeah, George, this happened to me in London once. Yeah, you think you're getting the, uh, the non-local price. Okay. How about instead of drinks, we ask for information? Hey, I'll give you five if you give us some information on... Uh, a gentleman by the name of Zuzu Top. You looking for Zuzu? That's right. The barkeep sticks out an appendage, almost like requesting the money. Okay, I, I give him the five gold. He says, mm. All right, tell you what, you've been summoned upstairs. Oh, all right. Uh, Can we have a refund then on the five gold? <laughs> Uh, I pass out the drinks and I usher the gang up to the stairs, up to the second floor. You climb the creaking wooden stairwell up until you reach the second floor, uh, what appears to be a large attic with the same vat of glowing blue liquid coming through the floor. Barney, these stairs could use some work. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> a voice calls from the other side of the vat. You think you can wall off into Area 51 and I wouldn't know? You peer around the blue vat and find a long table surrounded by a few abrellions. You recognize one at the head of the table. A Slimy green abrellion with spindly rubbery lips. Oh, let Lizzie explain something to you, Ordies. We abrellions all look after our own, so you're never gonna find Zuzu. <laughs> but guess you have something in common with him now. Nobody's gonna find you either. <laughs> Get him, boys. Three abrellions leap out from their chairs and charge after you. It's an invasion. Everyone roll initiative. But we're going to have to pick that up next time on the next episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. Oh, oh. 20. I rolled a four. We'll redo those rolls because I don't want to write them down <laughs> okay. right now because I'm going to forget them. But thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back next week with another episode. Find out what happens. Is Lizzie going to extract uh, her revenge? Will Elga persevere? I don't know. Stop what you're doing before you exit out of this podcast. Go check us out at Stinky Dragon Pod on social media. For the love of God, please. <laughs> This episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon was produced by Ben Ernst, written, edited, and composed by Micah Reisinger, with additional editing work by David Sanye. Here's a quick shout-out to folks that interacted with us on social media recently. Here's some NPCs named after them in this episode. Chief Inspector Weezer of the Coughs is named after Commander Carl Weezer 567 on Reddit and Discord. Quill the Nosy a Brillian Prisoner, named after at Quillock, aka Quill, on Reddit and Discord. Limber Lizzie the Abrellian, named after at Lizzie Lindlin on Instagram. Zuzu Top, the Abrellian Magician, named after at the Animal Overlord on Instagram. And of course, I want to give a special thanks to some friends who provided voiceover for characters in this episode, like Chief Inspector Weezer of the Coughs, voiced by Micah Reisinger, at Micah Reisinger, Quill the Nosy, a brilliant prisoner, voiced by Funhouse's Ryan Haley, at Ryan Game Show, The Alchemist, voiced by Blizzbear, at Blizzbear, 
Limber Lizzie the Abrellian, Achievement Hunters Lindsay Jones, at I am Lindsay Jones. Tune in next time for another thrilling episode of Tales from the Stinky Dragon. 